Blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh, he's been my fourth man In the fire Time after time I'm born of his spirit I'm washed in his blood Praising my reason. 
And welcome to another Connect here from the Sanctuary of New Life Church. Hey, I'd like to invite you, if you've never been to New Life, it's a great place to come and worship God. We have an awesome time. We have a family of God here, not just a church to attend. We love each other, we care about each other, and we worship God together. And I'd like to invite you to join us some Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. You can join us at 201 Bluebird Lane. And just for ease of direction, if you know where Lowe's is, the uh, home improvement store, we're right behind Lowe's. So just keep coming past Lowe's and you'll come right to where New Life Church is. They call us the Hershey Kiss Church because our building is shaped like a Hershey's chocolate kiss. Well, today I want to talk to you about something that's really great, and that is how to worship God and worshiping God. And I have our music minister, our pastor, who has been with us over 20 years now, I guess. 20 years. Uh, 20 years. And... He is with us today to talk about what it means to worship and what is God doing through our worship of him. Please welcome with me Pastor Steve Burton. He is with me today. Hi, Pastor Steve. Good to be here. Good. Hey, let's talk about the worship. What do you think God is doing right now? What do you think he's saying? It definitely feels fresh, new. I mean, um, like we've had a good, rich, deep history of worship for as long as I've been here. And... um, But it definitely feels like uh, the end of last year and rolling into this year, it's changing. Like there's something fresh on the wind, if that makes sense. Yeah. You and I were talking the other day about uh, we're having a visitor come and visit with us. And she was talking about the new song of the Lord. And you were talking about there is something stirring inside of you. What is that? Uh, I mean, I do write songs and sometimes I take years to finish. (laughs) I'm not always proud of that. But um, I, I definitely feel there's something just out of reach that I'm trying to, 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 to get my hands on that um, it's probably a timing thing. But, um, but it's not, you know, we were talking about It's not to just our, a song. It's not no. just a song. It's no. a new level of yeah. song worship type. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, you never know what that's going to look like till you get there. No. And sometimes you don't realize you're there till you're in the thick of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> in fact, how many times has that happened on a Sunday morning? All the time. All the time. Right. Uh, You know, we come in, I know you have a set list that Mm -hmm. you go by, but how many times does God change that? Or He does. And really, even though I have a set list, it's really just a jump off point. Because once I get past that first or second song, I really don't have a plan for what's going to happen next. And I'm just, I'm feeling it out as I go. Just like you are. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, And the nice thing about that is, is that as we listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying, we can flow and go in the direction that he wants us to go. Right. How do you think, or what do you think is one of the biggest hindrances to many churches uh, in that area of worship? I think probably, and and this is probably going to surprise anyone who hears it, but probably the biggest hindrance is the senior pastor. Wow. Now, see, I would have thought (laughs) it's the songs they sing or or, or, uh, they just set, they stay with a set no matter what. But you're saying it's the senior pastor. Yeah. Why? Uh, It's they have to, number one, they have to value it more even so than the the worship team. If they want a culture of deep worship, they have to fight for it. And they have to show the congregation that they're willing to fight for it. And if they don't establish that culture, no one's going to. You can't go past your leader. So even the worship leader can't go past their senior pastor. Um, And Mm. when they try to, it's always like hitting a brick wall. It's a clash. It's a clash. Right. Yeah. 
because that, that senior pastor, and, and, and when we call him a worshiper also, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean he's jumping up and raising no, his hands, no. but he's got to be internally a worshiper of God yes. and allow the freedom of God to yeah. flow. Yeah, and, and, and you have you've taught me this over the years. If something's not going right, you're, you value it enough to say, stop, yes. let's get on track, we're going to fight for this. And I, I, many churches, even if a pastor truly desires deep worship, they're not willing to go that far to get it. You know what I mean? Well, so. it, it does take some bravery. Yeah. You know? I mean, it really does. <laughs> it takes does. a lot of bravery. Well, 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 first of all, you know, what most people don't realize is you got to be sensitive to the spirit and know the atmosphere is not right. right. That's number one. But number two, I'm actually interrupting you, right? right? And what you sought God for, yeah. because that song list that you come with, you haven't just, I say, let's do this, this, and this this week, right? Right. No, I've, I've sought the Lord's face on that. And many times that changes. But I, I remember in the early years, when you would come up and do that, that would definitely throw me. Right. I'd be like, oh, no. I mean, like, I thought I had a path here. And, but over the years, we've built a trust. Yeah. So I, I'm like, even if I don't understand, I trust you. And vice versa. Right, right? exactly. Yeah. But, you know, because there's times, you, and you know, there's times I've actually stopped the service and it had nothing to do with what you all were doing. Right. But they were not participating. Right. In fact, I remember one particular service, I, I told them, we are not a sit on your hands church. <laughs> and that didn't mean everybody got up and worshiped. No. That meant you participated. Yeah. And don't you, don't you find that you need the church's participation to really make the, the, yeah. the, the transitions mm -hmm. into deeper and deeper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the room has to go with you because when, I mean, the whole point of leading worship as a team is we're fighting for atmosphere. And if there's conflicting atmospheres, you really can't, you can't go anywhere meaningful. You know what I mean? If we got a great atmosphere up here, but if they're not joining in with it, then there's, there's two atmospheres competing. And, and that happens a lot. I oh, mean, yeah, yeah. You know, not that we're competing all the time like that, but what happens a lot is what we're feeling up here and what they're feeling down there. It can be different. Yes, yeah. because we're engaged in this whole atmosphere of worship. Mm -hmm. They're sitting there, and some of them are participating, some of them are watching, but there's babies crying, there's people coming in late to the yeah. service and so people on. People are bringing in their problems. Yes. Um, and they're, they're focused on that sometimes. And that can have a big effect on, on the atmosphere. Yeah. And that's why sometimes we have to keep pushing to push this atmosphere out to them yeah. so they can engage with us. Right. A lot to, I, I was studying Daniel uh, when, when he started seeking the Lord about certain things and the angel came. He said, from the first day you started praying, I was sent, but then I was held back by a principality. Right. That stuff's real. Yes, and it some, is really and real. And sometimes that's what we're, we're dealing with. We're dealing with resistance in the, the spiritual realm, not even from the people. So it, it can come from the people. It can come from an outer influence spiritually. But a lot of times you're, you're battling for that atmosphere. You know I mean? And once you've got it and, and you've taken it, then all of a sudden everything becomes easy. Now, I know what happens. Like, you know, a lot of times I'll be sitting there, and, and I don't know how to describe it, but mm -hmm. I'm waiting for the song of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, do you like when that song hits, it can be the first song. Sometimes it's been the first song right. or the second or third, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not just number four down on the list. Right. Yeah. But I sense that we've got the song of the Lord. That's when I'm going to start making a move towards the pulpit. Yeah. Do you sense that same thing? A lot of times, not every time. Sometimes you come on up surprises me because I either... I'm not, I didn't get there. I didn't have my breakthrough yet. Okay. <laughs> um, and I've learned to d distinguish between what's happening for me and then what's happening in the room because they can be two different things. Well, um, I noticed a couple of weeks ago, and uh, for those who don't know, Pastor Steve lost his mom a couple of weeks ago. But I noticed uh, after that, uh, first time you were back on that Sunday morning, that you were someplace different Absolutely, I was. than we were, Absolutely. right? Uh, you were in a much diff different, and I'll say deeper, I don't know if that's the right terminology, but you were somewhere and you were pulling us with you. Mm -hmm. Did you sense that or not? Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that was you know, obviously a very traumatic, traumatic experience, yeah. but uh, spiritually it really affected me. And I just, I guess I became a, a lot more aware or appreciative of, of 
all those things, and uh, I was able to dial in a lot faster, maybe a lot uh, clearer yes. that day because I was just, it's also raw still, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I know we have a great set of musicians. Oh, yeah. They our can follow awesome. along with you, yeah. the top-notch guys, right? Uh, from our bass players to the guitarists to the drummers and mm -hmm. keyboard and everything else. Uh, but when we start that flow in, in that service, okay, you guys play a long time sometimes. Sometimes a few hours, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sometimes. How does that affect you? Oh, it's exhausting. <laughs> but not while you're doing it. No, it? no. When you're in it, you, it, it feels um, as easy as breathing. And then when you're done, then you realize how much energy you really put out. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, don't, I don't think the average person realizes that after a Sunday service, oh, yeah. we are drained. Sure. You yeah. know? And you say, well, all you did was preach. All you did was sing some songs. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't work that way. No, because yeah. another thing I don't think they, they understand, uh, and they don't have to because it's not their responsibility, mm -hmm. but while you're trying to get to that place where God can really move and flow, mm -hmm as I am trying to get to the same spot, yeah. there's spiritual battles going yeah, on inside yeah, of us. Yeah, and the Bible talks about Jesus after he ministered to the crowds, he would go away into the wilderness to, to kind of replenish and pray. And, right. and that's because it drained him. Right. I mean, like, he's literally doing battle with principalities of evil. I mean, it, it, And so are we during so are worship. We. Yes, yes. You know, I mean, during worship, it seems like... Uh, you know, like the enemy is telling you, you don't have the right song, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that those struggles go on all the time. Yeah. All the time. You missed it, you should have done this instead of that. Yeah, I mean, like, those struggles are always going on. Yeah. And there's times when I will come up and ask you to change a song or yeah. something, uh, and it's not that I am doubting what God has given you. Not at all. But I, it's, I know what he wants to go, yeah. right? And I need an appropriate song yeah. to help lead them there. Yeah, and again, that's just a trust factor. You know I mean, like, I, that used to throw me. You know I mean, like, right. I, like, I would be hard on myself, like, you totally missed it. You know well, I mean? But you didn't. Right, but, but, but I trust. I was like, it's better to, 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 to get on track, no matter how we have to get there, than to spend an entire service off track. Right. You know I mean? like, and, well, but also, to be very honest with you, at least for me, if all we did every week was come in, and even if you heard from God on those songs, mm -hmm. and it was the same thing every week, week after week, that'd get boring. It does, yeah. yeah you got, and that's, that's the big trap for, for us as a team is to fall into monotony, to fall into predictability. I mean, like, that's, that's, that we, that's like, not good. <laughs> we uh, constantly, and not every week, obviously, but you're always introducing new songs. Yeah. Why do you do that? New songs are the lifeblood of, of a worship team. I mean, it keeps us from getting stale. Um, it gives us new expression. And, and really, I mean, God, is, is, his ways are higher. He's unsearchable. It, we'll spend all of eternity still discovering new things about him. So the songs have to reflect that. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. there'll, there'll never be enough songs to capture it all. Um, ever. ever. Ever, ever. But it also keeps us fresh musically. It keeps us fresh just... Um, in general, keeps us from getting stale. You know? Now, you guys rehearse every Tuesday night. Yeah, two hours. Okay. Uh, and I happen to know that y every Tuesday night is not a technical rehearsal. No. And explain the difference, w what a technical rehearsal is. Technical rehearsal, you're going over, like... Um, chords. Who's, who's singing what chords, I mean, uh, harmonies, what chord progressions... Um, arrangements, you know, do, do we stop the drums here, do the singers cut out there? So that's technical stuff you're working on. Sometimes we'll work on sound issues. Um, but sometimes uh, we'll have just worship nights where we just worship together as a team. And not learning new songs. No, no. And not even rehearsing songs. No, no. It's totally... Worship. Right. Yeah. Why do you do that? Because uh, you, you can't take people um, to places you haven't been yourself. You can't lead people to places you haven't been yourself. So even though the team is very well seasoned, um, we still have to, you know, navigate some of those places without the burden of taking the congregation with us. Right. Um, and also it gives us a chance to minister to each other. There's prayer involved a lot of times. Pastor John is on the team. A lot of times there's prophetic words given. I mean, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So. And one of the things that I've, I've noticed in many churches, and, it's, it, and it has to do with creativity and creative people and all, mm -hmm. they're constantly at odds with each other. That can happen. Right? It doesn't seem like that's happening here. No. Um, for us, I've, over the years, have really tried to foster a culture of family 
amongst the team. And we got our issues every once in a while. We all do. There's yes. an argument. There's a right. disagreement. Um, but overall, the team has embra embraced that uh, mentality. And, um, and each other. Each other, yeah. So, like, we see each other as an extended family. Um, so we pray for each other. We talk, tell each other our needs. You know what I mean? Um, it's not like we're talking every day. We don't do that. Um, mm -hmm. But in, in our rehearsal times, in our circle times, we'll share, hey, I'm going through this. Can you pray? Or, you know, so. And also, uh, we've, I've, I've tried to foster showing each other respect. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it, knowing it's not just about the individual. It's about the whole team and what we're up trying to accomplish, you know what I mean? So. And you, you've encouraged them to give you opinions on a yeah. song or yeah. suggest a song. Or yeah, stuff. in fact, a lot of songs we do are suggestions from the team. Right. Um, I, don't, I don't pick them all just myself. I mean, if I did everything that everyone brought to me, there, we wouldn't have enough services to right, do them. Right, and right. So I can't take everyone's suggestions, but I'll probably give more weight uh, to a song coming from someone on the team than someone from outside the team just because they have skin in the game. Right. And yeah, they're they know the work that it takes to, to put something out there and yeah, I mean so And isn't having skin in the game what it's all about yeah. really? Yeah, it is. You know? Yeah. And and those nights and I, I understand I guess you had rehearsal last night. Mm -hmm. You had one of those kind of spiritual nights last was it last night? Well no, we actually worked on new songs last oh, night. Oh that's right. Yeah. Was it last week or um, a couple of weeks ago? A couple weeks that? ago we actually spent a long time actually discussing a service. Okay. Uh, and and um it was, an, it was a different service that God had moved in a different way, and we were discussing what it was like for each of us and what we were thinking and how we processed it. And, um, and at the beginning of the year, we had a, a rehearsal where half of it was taken up with Pastor John came and literally had a prophetic word for everyone on the team. Oh, really? Yeah, um, and, and everyone was really, really ministered to that, that, that week. Was he right? Yeah, I think so. Good, because he's got our next <laughs> guest next. today. He's on the next program today, so I, I, I can relax. And, and yeah, no, yeah. No, I, I, a lot of times, sometimes there's, there's timing involved, but it, it really seemed to, to resonate with everybody. Praise God. Yeah. Uh, I, I think as I watch the team, and I know they kind of rallied around you yeah. with, with your mom's mm -hmm. passing and that stuff, yeah. right? Uh, but I kind of see them as a f mini family of the family here. Yeah, yeah, they, they are. They, they, um, one of our newer uh, bass players, Phil, um, was one of the things he keeps telling me is, is I've never been accepted so fast and, and so completely, you know, mm -hmm. anywhere. And... Um, He's only been with us a little over a year now. I mean, so, and he feels like he fits in and he's part of the family. Yeah. So. Yeah. He's a great bass player. He's and a great, great bass guitarist. player. Yeah, yeah. He's, and he's a great guy. He's I mean, a great just, guy. But, uh, but I've just always, if, you, if you've made it onto the team, I'm going to treat you like you've been here forever. And the rest of the team kind of does the same. You know, yeah. So. And because of that, yeah. it creates a place on Sunday mornings, mm -hmm. right, yeah. where... It's like the upper room experience. Yeah. If this team comes all in one accord Amen. Yeah. for the same purpose, yes. right, then pow. And they are all worshipers, I got to say. Uh, from young and old, they really do want to worship the Lord. So I, I, look, I look for that just as much as I look for musical talent. Praise God. Because you can have all the musical talent and then have a, a host of issues because of, you know, it not being serious about the spiritual things or, or thinking it's all about you and, you know. Right. The stage is very, very attractive to a lot of people. <laughs> the stage is very attractive. So I, I have a question, but I'm not going to let you answer it on this program today. Okay. I'd like to get you back and answer the okay. question. When you are, and I'll call it an interview, but when you are looking to add new people to the music ministry. Okay. What do you look for? What qualities besides just their ability to play? And, and even that has to play into yeah. to some degree. It does. It does. But what other things do you look for mm -hmm. that makes this a family with as least amount of division yes. as possible? All right, so that's on the next one. That's on the okay. next one. You hey, I pray you have enjoyed this show today. I pray that you will understand even more importance about worship. I'm going to ask Pastor Steve to come back for another show, but I want you to also understand it takes two to tango and it takes two to worship God. 
Yes, you can do it on your own, but in that corporate setting, the more people that engage in worship with the worship team, the stronger the draw upon the anointing of God that rests on them. So when you attend church, whether it's here or in another facility or another church or another ministry, engage, worship God, because that draws the anointing and brings the presence of God in all of his fullness. Hey, until the next time here on Connect, we'll see you on a Sunday morning service at 11 a.m. here at New Life Church, 201 Bluebird Lane, 11 o'clock Sunday mornings. We'll see you then. God bless and good night.